Welcome to the Pick Connection. I'm John Evans, your host. If you're an employer looking for qualified employees or an individual looking to find out what their strengths are, then you want to stay with us today because we are going to be talking about assessments. So stay with us. We'll be right back. With me now is Maria Lovat. And Maria, thanks so much for coming on the show today. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me, John. Maria, you're going to be talking about a SAGE assessment program that the Private Industry Council has. And for our viewers, how long have you been doing this program? And, and just basically, uh, what is it all about? I'm John. I have been the assessment services coordinator here at the Private Industry Council for three years. And I co coordinate all the usage for our SAGE assessment mm -hmm. and the other assessments that we have here at the Private Industry Council. Good. And we'll be talking about all those yeah, later. later on in the program. But also right now, you're going to be talking to a customer that you've been working with for a while. And she's going to talk about how that has benefited her organization. Yes, um, Joy Gizzo, I'm going to interview Joy Gizzo, and she is with the Eastern Westmoreland Career and Technology Center, and it's down here in Lechobe. Okay, let's do it then. Let's do it. All right. So what's your title there at Eastern? I am Coordinator of Special Populations. And how long have you been there? You've been there a few years, haven't you? Since 2008. So... We want to tell the listeners how the Eastern Westmoreland CTC actually uses our SAGE assessment. Can you explain it to them a little bit? Okay, we use it uh, as a placement tool in helping the students um, pick the classes and shops that uh, would best be matched with the students' um, abilities and aptitudes. Um, and included among those um, components of the assessment, we do the uh, eye-hand coordination as well as the academic components. Then uh, once that test is completed, uh, we have an IEP meeting with the special population students. In that IEP meeting, um, we sit with uh, the school district, the special education teacher, uh, the parent, and um, somebody from Eastern Westmoreland uh, Votech usually me, who then explains um, the results of, the, of that SAGE test. Um, and what we try to do is guide the student um, into uh, choosing the shop that best matches his aptitudes and abilities. Uh, we also look at non-traditional matches and traditional matches as well. Then we have the students come and the students actually uh, spend some time in those uh, shops that match the SAGE assessment. Um, they get to pick two and then we pick uh, one. And then um, we have another meeting, go over the SAGE results with the parents, and um, then we make the recommendation for replacement based upon those meetings. How successful has it been for Eastern Westmoreland? Well, we, we have been taking data since about 2008 when I came. And we found that we have a 99.6% success rate um, when the students uh, choose what the SAGE indicates would be the best match for them. Um, what are, how about the parents? Do you have the parents? What do they say when, they, when you talk with them about the SAGE assessment? Okay. They are excited that we're actually giving the students some type of placement test and not just placing them into the shop because the student thinks that he or she wants to be in that shop. It looks fun or exciting or something like that. So we don't want students disappointed and we don't want parents disappointed um, as to what they think the shop is. And that's why we do the test and then we have them shadow and spend some time in those shops. What would you tell other schools about using the SAGE assessment? Uh, this is the best uh, predictor of success in the technical school. Um, it gives a total picture of the students, not just aptitudes, abilities, but fine motor, gross motor, all the types of skills that the student would need to be successful, not only in that shop, but for the rest of the student's life. Because we want them to leave us uh, getting a job that actually matches setting the aptitudes the student, and abilities. Setting the student up for success, success. For, to be a successful adult. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we want them to have a successful transition into adult life. I am back with Maria Lovett. Maria, I really enjoyed your interview you had with Joy. Yeah, we Joy's very good. We have had a lot of success with Eastern Westmoreland CTC over the last few years. 
and she seems to be really enthusiastic about the program. It is, and it works like a charm. We have the process down to the T. Good, good. PIC has many exciting things coming up soon, including the Day of Giving on October 3rd. The Community Foundation of Westmoreland County will partially match donations made to the Private Industry Council via www.westmorelandgives.org, but only if those donations are made on October 3rd. We hope that you'll be able to offer your support. If you can't offer it on October 3rd, we are always grateful for contributions, and you can donate through our website, www.privateindustrycouncil.com, any day of the year. Donations enable us to enhance and expand our services. Please support the Private Industry Council on the Day of Giving via www.westmorelandgives.org and help us continue to serve the people of southwestern Pennsylvania. With me now is Terry Campbell, and Terry is the Vice President of Operations. Terry, thank you so much for coming on our show today. Thanks for being here, John. Terry, why the SAGE assessment? Why did the Private Industry Council go out and make such a big investment in this assessment? Well, in 2001, because of all of the job seekers that we serve, we decided that we needed a tool to help them make more informed decisions. When they're making decisions about training programs or decisions about careers that they want to pursue. Um, and so we decided to look at various assessment tools. And when we found SAGE, we found that it was a very comprehensive tool. It can assess a wide variety of um, characteristics about an individual. So we chose the SAGE assessment at that time. Since then, uh, in 2005, we received um, some money from the U.S. Department of Labor with the help of Senator Santorum at the time, mm -hmm. and we began to approach employers and training providers to talk to them about the value of using assessments in making their hiring decisions. We have now found that it is very beneficial to the Private Industry Council as an employer of over 250 individuals. We find that it's a very helpful tool in using when we're making hiring decisions. So we wanted to make that offer to other employers mm -hmm. as well. Terry, uh, as far as the, the employers are concerned, why and when would they use SAGE? Well, John, employers get a lot of information when they are looking at candidates for a job. First, they want to know what has the person done, what kind of experience do they have, and they're able to get that kind of information from a resume or from a job application. They also want to know what the person wants to do, what their motivation is, and typically an employer will get that type of information in an interview. You're able to tell an employer, mm -hmm. oh yes, I would love to do that particular job, this is what I've been dying to do my entire life. But another piece of information that an employer should have is what can the person do? And that's where assessments come into play because an assessment can help to indicate what can the person do right now, but what potential do they have to learn to do other types of tasks. Mm -hmm. In most situations, I'm sure you know in the work that you do, a person doesn't come in with exactly right. the mm -hmm. experience and the background that an employer needs. Mm -hmm. So what an employer wants to know is, does this person have the ability to learn if I'm going to spend time to teach them and to train them on this job? Do they have the potential to be able to do this particular task? Okay. Terry, how is it used to hire the right person? Well, John, I'm sure you wouldn't be surprised to know that most people exaggerate in job interviews and many of them misrepresent themselves on a resume. No, it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, we, uh, that's what statistics have, have said and that's what employers have said as well. And when we educate employers about the value of using assessments, and in particular mm -hmm. SAGE, we help them to see that ultimately hiring the right person for the right job increases their employees productivity by matching the person to the right job and matching their traits to the right job it results in less stress not only for the individual but also for the employer and um, it helps make the managers more aware of the strengths and the limitations of that person so that they can focus in on specific um, traits that they mm -hmm. need to help to reinforce um, using sage to hire the right people also reduces turnover uh, and it also um, helps uh, eliminate 
some legal actions that could result from employers making those um, quick decisions based on their gut instincts yeah. or uh, their decisions based on that first impression that is made when a person is first introduced to them. Yeah, I like how uh, it reduces the turnover because, as you know, there's a lot of time in, put into training new people. Absolutely. So if you can keep that person, uh, that's going to be better for the company. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, it's going to make things better. Exactly. Terry, how is it used to maximize the current workforce? Well, John, in the current workforce, there are so many untapped talents within a particular company. And um, we're told also that managers tend to spend at least 60% of their time on people problems. In addition, most training decisions are more reactive rather than proactive. SAGE can help all of these things. It allows for more effective management because the supervisors can help to coach and motivate and more effectively manage their workforce because they have information that tells them what the strengths and the limitations of their mm -hmm. uh, employees are. It also helps in uh, creating training that is based on the specific needs and the characteristics of employees. So rather than training everyone, perhaps an employer can identify a particular group of employees who have particular needs and customize the training more geared towards specific groups of employees. Mm -hmm. In addition, using SAGE with a current workforce helps to enhance planning decisions and it increases retention of employees. So by using it for making planning decisions, we can use it to establish succession plans and to identify, again, untapped talents that our current workforce has to move those people into other jobs, opening up lower level jobs for new employees to come into the company. Mm -hmm. Well, Terry, this is a lot of good stuff, a lot of good detail for employers. So I imagine the return on investment's got to be pretty good. It definitely is. The return on investment comes in many different forms. As we've already talked, it can reduce turnover. So increasing employee retention and lowering the hiring cost because it's re really expensive mm -hmm. to hire a new oh, person. Yes. All of, from the advertising to the time and effort that it takes to look at all of the applications and to go through the interview process, it takes a lot of time and time is money. There's also a return on investment in that we are able to hire better performers. Again, higher productivity, which results in increased sales and increased quality of whatever product a company is, is producing, and um, also can decrease the amount of work-related injuries. When you have the right match and you have the right person in the right job mm -hmm. who has the capabilities of doing that particular job, it reduces the, any in injuries that may result. And, and Terry, what I like about it is, you know, there's already a lot of fixed costs in an operation. Some of those costs you cannot get around. And when you hire somebody, as you said, you're hiring an unknown. So with the assessment, you get that unknown out. You get to know more about that person. So yeah. if you're looking to save money and uh, get a good return on your investment, then, you know, an assessment like this, I think, would be very beneficial. Exactly, exactly. There, there are a lot of unknowns, and this provides objective information that helps an employer mm -hmm. make their a decision. decision. Yeah, yes. a good decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the only decision, but it's, it, it helps them make a very good decision. Right. Yes, yes we, we definitely um, encourage employers to use all of the information that's available to them. So mm -hmm. certainly they want to take into consideration the person's background, their experience, their, their education or their work history, in addition to how they conduct themselves in an interview. But again, this helps them to have some additional pieces of information that can show that potential for future mm -hmm. um, future performance. Terry, what I'm interested in too, every year there's an organiza organization that comes in here the operating engineers. And my goodness, there's a lot of people come through here. <laughs> yes, there are. Uh, the operating engineers, they're actually the Western Pennsylvania Operating Engineers Joint Apprenticeship and Training Program. Mm -hmm. It's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, they're located over in uh, New Alexandria, and they uh, conduct an apprenticeship program for heavy equipment operators, the folks who run all the equipment that you see in the construction projects yeah. out on the road. And they also have an apprenticeship program for heavy equipment mechanic technicians, so the people who are maintaining all of those pieces of equipment. And when they advertise, they are recruiting from 33 counties in Pennsylvania, wow. three counties in Ohio, wow. and they typically get close to 800 applicants each year 
for few positions in this apprenticeship program yeah they approached us about six years ago and they were looking for a way to make better decisions about the folks who have the potential to be successful not only in that apprenticeship program but ultimately on the job mm -hmm. at one of the many employers that would be hiring these apprentices once they're done with their training so we worked with them as well as another organization in the area and we customized a assessment system for them so they're only using a handful of the sage assessment uh, components and then they're using some paper pencil assessments that we also administer on site in Greensburg um, for them okay. so each February March around that time frame once they get all their applications in every one of those applicants those 800 or so applicants mm -hmm. comes to our Greensburg site in groups of 60 people and um, long days but we get yeah. them all <laughs> through this assessment system within a two-week time yeah. period and provide all of the results to the operating engineers which then allows them to make better decisions as to which of those candidates they should interview and then ultimately with all of the information available to them to make the decision of which they should offer the apprenticeship slots to. Well, they must be very satisfied. They've been doing it for six years, right? Yes, they yeah. have. And what's great about that program, you mentioned it, and Maria also did, is you can customize it to any company. <laughs> right, right. The, the one thing that the operating engineers really like is the eye-hand-foot coordination. Think about the types of machinery when you're driving a bulldozer oh, yeah, or any yeah. of those pieces of equipment. You need to have good eye-hand-foot coordination to be able to move the dirt or do all of the tasks that are necessary. Mm -hmm. So they really like that assessment, but they use uh, some of the others, the finger dexterity. Mm -hmm. They also use form perception, and they use work attitude, which helps them determine that this person really understands the expectations of an employer yeah. and the behaviors and the attitudes that, that are be needed. A, be an important one there. Mm -hmm. They also look at their math skills, however, mm -hmm. and they also look at their um, uh, their observation skills. Again, very important because safety is, is critical in that mm -hmm. type of work. And so we have a video that they watch and they answer questions to um, to see how well they observed and paid attention to the detail of the video. And Terry, now we were talking about uh, return on investment a little bit earlier, and Maria had mentioned the cost of this program. And just to get back to that, because there is 19 components in this assessment, and it really gets into detail. And if employers are looking for a return on investment, one of the things I think they're going to be happy about is the cost of this. It's not very expensive. No. As a nonprofit, we aren't looking to make a ton of money. We need to cover our costs and we want to offer this as a great service because we know how valuable it is ourselves. So if a company chooses to use all 19 assessments, it would cost them $60 per person. Now that cost could go up or down depending mm -hmm. on how we customize it. If they're only going to, such as the operating engineers, use a handful of those 19 assessments, then the cost could go down. If they are asking for us to go on site or to go to a, a location that we typically don't administer the assessment, it might cost a little bit more because we have the, the transportation and some of our maintenance uh, workers who may help us to transport the mm -hmm. equipment to those locations. But you're right, John, it is, it's very affordable yeah. and it really is worth the little bit of uh, extra time and the little bit of money up front because ultimately if you look at the return on investment it saves money in the end. Yeah. And now one thing you had told me earlier too Terry that you know some of the maybe employers are, are you know they want to they want to find employees that match their good employees right now that they have and you can actually go in and take like what they call baseline reading I guess right. match up their best employees who do the best work and then you can use that to you know, find somebody maybe who matches those qualities. Is that correct? Right, right. The, the SAGE assessment itself is tied into the U.S. Department of Labor data. And so we are able to pull from that data, say um, an individual, well, the heavy machine operator mm -hmm. that the operating engineers have. We can look at the analysis that the U.S. Department of Labor has done over all of these years since the mid-60s. To, which will show us exactly the cognitive skills and the aptitudes, just like s we're able to assess through SAGE, what score a person should have in order to be able to perform that work. So we could use that data when we're helping an employer determine what scores should they be looking for. 
But what you're talking about, establishing that baseline, an even better way of establishing what an employer should be looking for in the scores is by assessing their existing workforce. Mm. If they have people already doing that work, and we don't necessarily encourage them to get the best mm -hmm. because maybe they have one or two who are the best. Yeah. And sure, you'd love to be able to cl clone those individuals, mm -hmm. but we say pick out a good cross-section of people that are doing that job to your satisfaction. And so we try to get you know male, female, some who have been on the job a short time compared to those that have been there for many, many years. Um, you know what? However, we can get a good variety of individuals doing that job to their satisfaction, and then we assess them. And rather than looking at their individual results, we combine them all together to show where are the high and low scores, mm -hmm. or where are the majority of people scoring on this particular assessment and that particular assessment. Oh, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. That'd be great for, for an employer to be able to use. And Terry, and you know, this is often said, this is a global economy. So if an employer is looking to get maybe a little bit of an edge, got to have a good, working, a good workforce, and this is a tool I think that they should take advantage of. Absolutely, I agree. All right. Hey, Terry Campbell, Vice President of Operations, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks, John. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Nanette, and you're watching The Pick Connection. I'm back with Terry Campbell, and Terry, you're actually going to talk to an employer who has used a SAGE assessment. Yes, Phyllis Miller from Hamill Manufacturing Company. They're located in Trafford. Um, they have been using it for many, many years. They were one of our um, earliest customers when we started to offer this to other employers. So I'm really excited Good. that she's able to uh, talk with us today. Well, I look forward to uh, listening to that interview, so we'll be right back. Tell us about Hamill Manufacturing and what your position is there. Well, I'm the Human Resources Manager at Hamill Manufacturing, and we are a precision machining company in Trafford, Pennsylvania. We have about 124 employees, and the majority of those employees are machinists and welders. And it is difficult finding folks to be able to take those positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so why did you decide to look at assessments in general and what brought you to the SAGE assessment? We had always done assessments. We had done it through the National Tooling and Machining Association and uh, it was becoming more and more difficult to get the results and it just, just wasn't really working for us any longer and so we went out looking for something else and we found SAGE. And the reason why we really liked it was because we were able to benchmark against our own people. You know, it's one thing to benchmark against a national number, and you don't know where those folks are from. They could be from California. But when you benchmark against your own people, you can see where they're going to fit in. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is we, we gave 10 folks our, the test. We started some apprentices and some very senior machinists. So we were able to see a, a cross-section of what our machinists scored and then when we have a new person come in and score we can see where they're going to fit within that same mm -hmm. same level so we really like that part of it yeah so once you know what score you're looking for you know that if you find new people who score similarly that they that have the fit. potential to be successful mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. right yes great great so that's a little bit about how it helps you identify new employees. Um, I know you've also used it with some existing employees as well when you're looking to promote people from within. Well, in the past we didn't have those scores. So when we have uh, job changes and job postings and we want to see how existing employees score to see if they would be able to take an, a different or a higher position, mm -hmm. we do like to give the SAGE test to see how they are going to do in, in a higher position, in a different position. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. Um, and you've told me in the past in using it with new employees and with incumbent employees that you, you've been in this field for a long time in human resources and you sometimes get gut feelings about individuals that either they're going to be a good fit or they're not going to be a good fit. How has SAGE helped you with that? It's amazing because People will come and say to me, you know, I, I don't know how I did on that. I don't, I don't think I did very good, or I think I did this, or I think I did that. And when we show them the results, they're amazed at how much of a match it really is to their personality and to, to their level. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really interesting to see 
they really it really does hold true I would say mm -hmm. yes yeah that At first it's hard to believe but then after a while you do it and you say yeah it's it's it's, it's giving us the right reading mm-hmm right right yeah the they don't understand how you could get something out of some of the questions right. or some of the tasks and then when you do show it to them they're able to say yeah that describes yeah, me that describes it's things that people won't know to say about themselves or when they're doing some of the dexterities if they've never done that type of task before you can't ask them a question in an interview and say well how are you at uh, spatial perception <laughs> so Phyllis what would you say to other employers about using sage oh I would definitely recommend it I mean it's the best thing that we have found in all the years that we've been doing different types of uh, evaluations I really mm -hmm. and I really enjoy working with you folks at PIC because you're always very accommodating uh, we can send the folks up at any time normally it just takes a couple days to do the schedule and then we always get the results almost immediately and mm -hmm. that makes a big difference because when you're at the end of the hiring process and you decide to send that person for the test you want to know yesterday what the score was and it's mm -hmm. nice that we can get those scores so quickly mm -hmm. so yes I would definitely recommend it okay. and I know that th in many cases you have uh, job candidates who are interviewing for other jobs and you like getting the results because if you want to hire them you want to get that message to them as quick as possible before they take another job that's correct that's correct that's what I mean by we need that immediately back and when it mm -hmm. takes a week or so you might lose the candidate after during that period of mm -hmm. time so yes we right. really do uh, like working with you folks and we like the sage yes Great. Well, Phyllis, I thank you for um, talking with me today and for participating in this interview. Um, and it's been great working with you, not only in this project, but many, many others well, that we've worked you. with. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, please email me at jevans at privateindustrycouncil.com. I did receive an email from our previous show. This email came from Patrick, Patrick lives in Briar Hill. His question is, would a Head Start school bus pick my child up at the door? Patrick, transportation is provided, but there is no guarantee of door-to-door -door service due to the size of Fayette County. If you have any further questions about transportation, please call 724-430-4818, extension 103. And Patrick, for uh, you sending me an email and for me picking it, I'm sending you two Pittsburgh Zoo tickets. They're on their way. Thank you for watching the show today. I want to thank all the guests who came on the Pick Connection, and we'll see you next month.